I've come to think of the mysteries of the rosary in life kind of as a sense of journey and pilgrimage as well. I have uh, come to the rosary as a, as a way to pray only in, as I've gotten older in life. When I was younger, I just it was too much, too restless to calm down and pray the rosary. It was my mother's favorite form of prayer. But, and I think as a kid, it always reminded me of trouble because whenever there was something bad happened, my mother grabbed that rosary out of her pocketbook and was like, oh, here comes the rosary. We must be in trouble now. You know, it's like that was bring out the big guns time, you know. And then as I, uh, it, 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 to just sit calmly and, and pray the rosary is not my favorite thing to do. But now, was not. Now I love praying the rosary and I pray it most mornings and I do it during my morning walks. I, I, I couldn't sit still and do it. But walking and praying the rosary at the same time is a, is a way for me to access the, uh, the beauty and power of that prayer. And I don't do it officially, I do it my way. And that's perfectly okay, I give you all permission to pray it your way. I know that one day of the week's supposed to be sorrowful, one's supposed to be joyful. I don't even know what days of, goes with what, you know? There is no official way you have to do it, you know? We all find our way in prayer. And I just wanna add one more thing. I love about St. Therese, the little flower, why she's one of my BFFs in heaven, <laughs> is because she once said, I'd rather undergo Chinese torture than pray the rosary with the community. <laughs> she too loved the rosary, but she just could not stand how boring and monotone and droning on it was to everybody sit there and pray the rosary at the same time. And I thought, I got that, you know. If a doctor of the church can say that, then it's okay to, to pray the rosary however you want. So that said, let's take a look at the mysteries of the rosary through this filter of pilgrim eyes. But I've just learned this quote this summer from St. Hildegard of Bingen. What overwhelming joy that caused God to become a human being. And that's exactly what we celebrate in the joyful mysteries of the rosary. They all relate to Christ's infancy, the infancy narratives, uh, his childhood period of his life. So the Annunciation, traditionally is always depicted, often, not always, but happening in a garden because Mary's body is linked with the new garden of life where the new life of salvation, Jesus, is taking root. And so in this particular picture, she's in a yellow dress because she's the woman clothed with the sun. She, Gabriel has purple sneakers and a purple shirt on because it's the colors of Advent. And that's what, uh, you know, the season we're awaiting Christ's birth. And um, Mary has a purple belt because she's always liturgically correct. <laughs> and in Gabriel's hand is a sunflower instead of the traditional lily. Uh, you, in old paintings, you always see him bringing Mary a lily because that was one of her many flowers, but because it's shaped like a cup or a vessel, it could be full of grace, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. But here it's a sunflower because sunflowers turn their faces towards the sun all day long. Wherever the sun is, that's where the sunflower goes. And that's what we do in Advent. We're always turning our faces towards the coming sun. 